for your final uh, color drawing for the color unit you will have two choices and these are some of my favorite projects in my curriculum simply because the results are always really really cool uh, first option is the artist copy or the master's copy this was a very common thing to do in ateliers in uh, France and just classical training uh, students would gather around a, a painting by a master and simply copy it just to learn how to create colors and create balanced compositions and the proper forms um, you'll be doing this if you choose that project your other project is um, kind of a collage drawing almost uh, you synthesize multiple subjects or uh, sub just content within a single artwork and you're going to use uh, color in an expressive manner. So I'm going to go over both projects real quick here. The master study is very straightforward. You're going to pick a uh, masterpiece created by a western master or eastern master of art. And if you don't know what an old master is, uh, please do some research. Uh, Google search masters. Master fine artists and uh, chances are you'll get names like Leonardo da Vinci or Pablo Picasso. Any famous artist will count. If you're having trouble finding one, please ask me for help. Uh, more often than not, I will point you towards an art history textbook. Uh, if you just flip through those, the examples in there are most often considered master artists. To find a masterpiece, you just have to find an artist and look within their orb to uh, find a piece that is uh, of significant note. And again, if you're having trouble finding an artist or a piece, I will help you with that. Once you've found a piece, you're going to draw it on a 12 by 18 sheet of paper with any colored media. I highly recommend pastel, and you should copy that masterpiece one for one as perfectly as possible. Match all of the colors, the composition, and the values present in the work. Um, there are some copies in the examples that follow that are black and white copies. Uh, but I want you to do an exact color replica. Try not to colorize an existing uh, black and white work, and if you happen to pick one, again, I'm not going to allow it. Try to find a color uh, masterpiece to copy. These examples that follow, some of them, again, are in black and white. But uh, again, I won't allow you to do that. You have to find a color masterpiece to copy. These are just good examples of how to copy the form, in essence and uh, you're not really limited by which, which era you stick in. So if you want to do something that's a bit more modern, that's fine too. You'll see a mix between modern and uh, classical uh, examples throughout these uh, student examples that follow. Your second choice for this uh, final project group in the color unit is the expressive watercolor illustration. Uh, this project's a lot of fun. It's very trendy. Uh, a current trend actually is an illustration to use watercolors in this sort of uh, expressive manner. You're going to see a lot of examples of this in the slides to follow. And at the very end, I'll kind of talk about uh, an example I made that sort of shows you how to do the assignment. Essentially, what you're going to do is pick a central person or subject to be the main focus of the illustration. Uh, how you represent that person is totally up to you. It could be the entire person head to foot. It could be just their face. They could be turned to the side. doesn't really matter. You get a lot of freedom with that. And then you need to combine that person with other drawn elements, other media, or other related subjects. And that just means that you're using different colored media, so you can use watercolors, uh, pen and ink, uh, pencil or charcoal. You could combine it with um, different drawn elements, so like patterns or designs or just random scribbles, uh, something to add to the uh, subject itself. Or you can add other related subjects, so you can draw a person and then two more people or you know some words. doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm trying to get you out of your little box that says you have to draw one thing at a time and they all have to be kind of in the real world. Now you get to have a lot more creative freedom with this uh, project. Um, 
What I would recommend you do though before you start any of your final drawing is that you practice drawing and painting with watercolors. I would like you to try to have um, some controlled accidents in your watercolor painting. A lot of these examples are of extremely expressive watercolor use. And expressive just means that you can see where the watercolor is and where it goes. You can see brush strokes. It's rather messy. There's splatter. There's drips and blowing all over the place. Um, if you ever need help achieving any of these effects, please let me know. And I will be happy to assist you while you practice these effects on some paper before you start your drawing. When you feel confident in that, you can get a sheet of watercolor paper, set it to your board, and use any of the colored media that you practice using to represent your subject. And again, your subject can be anything. Uh, you can use a photographic reference or draw something uh, in the real world, doesn't matter. The objective here is to use this colored media creatively and have several subjects or several media and sort of combine all of these things together. So uh, take a look at these examples. They're, they're fantastic examples of professional illustrators and artists that use this style and this process. And stick around until the very end of the lecture where I will go over um, an example of mine. Those were some great examples, weren't they? Um, if you're having trouble uh, remembering some of the names, uh, make sure you go check out the actual PowerPoint presentation. You can find that on the syllabus on the uh, class page, uh, and that'll bring you to a link. That'll link you to a uh, uh, the PowerPoint presentation in Google Drive. Now, my example here, uh, I used ASAP Rocky, a wrapper, and I actually printed out some words that I just typed up in Microsoft Word using some different fonts, and that's what I combined. I combined a picture of him with some words that related to him, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of a ridiculous example to sort of show you all the options you have to be expressive with watercolors or ink, and uh, ink was the other media that I used. Again, you only have to combine a few things if you want. I, I kind of played around and combined a lot of different things for this example, but, uh, you know, this would be, in my mind, considered practice. Uh, I would probably try it again, maybe make the words a little bit smaller, or try to find a different photo of him that worked a little bit better. It doesn't really matter, though. Um, make sure you practice, and make sure you get really expressive with the watercolors. If you're having trouble do that, doing that, uh, let me know, and I'll, I'll show you some tricks for that.